You get your dog a new leather collar, a new leather leash. But they decide to chew it and they take out a chunk. Do you need to worry or not? These are the signs of intestinal obstructions for dogs, plus my top three remedies that you can use if your dog eats anything and it needs to be moved through. Today's video is sponsored by Pop Off Leather. They're this wonderful all natural leather company here in Nelson, BC. They've just made Pippi this wonderful new collar, this wonderful new leash. Tula's not being left out. She's also got a new collar and leash. I'll put a link in the description box and get something like this for your dog. Pippi might eat this piece of kibble, but she can also eat this piece of leather. And I get this question often. Doc, my dog has eaten something, AKA a sock. Like, do I need to worry? Do I need to rush in, go see my vet? Or is there something I can do at home? Say Pippi had eaten this chunk of leather, would I be concerned? First, leather is a 100% all natural product. It comes out of a cow, AKA. Lots of dogs eat leather. And then think about your dog eating a rawhide. Most of the time, part of it's broken down, it moves its way through. Pipster here had eaten this little bit smelly sock. Would I be concerned? Possibly, but most of the time, and definitely that was my experience in veterinary practice, it would just move on through. Definitely there are things that you can do to increase the likelihood of your dog passing it naturally on their own. But you do need to watch to see if there are any more serious clinical signs and your dog does need to be rushed in to see your vet. Number one, say so I woke up in the morning, my sock is gone, there's like a few remnants in the floor of Pippi's dog bed. I'm like, okay, what would I do? First, I'm just gonna overall assess her. Pippi, how do you seem? She's looking pretty normal, a really good sign. Generally, when a dog has an obstruction of anything, it's in their stomach, their intestinal tract, they're gonna feel painful, but they're gonna feel sick. Your dog won't seem the same. They're not gonna be bright, alert, and reactive. Number two, is there any vomiting? I mean, is your dog able to drink on his or her own? Pippi, can you drink this on your own? And if they do drink, are they gonna throw up after? So offer your dog some water, see if he or she is willing to drink. Pippi just drank there, great sign. After they consume that little bit of water, it's assuming they're drinking water, are they throwing up after? If they're not vomiting after they're ingesting something, it's a really good sign, most likely suggesting whatever they've eaten is slowly making its way through their intestinal tract. Three, are there any signs of abdominal pain? Generally a dog, if they've eaten something, they're gonna have abdominal discomfort. Typically they're gonna be hunched over. They're not standing upright like Pippi, wagging their tail. I mean, they're guarding, they're protecting their stomach. Often they're gonna be walking, but it's very stilted. It's not the same way as a dog normally would walk, right? Because their belly is sore. Think about yourself if you've got a sore abdomen. You're not running around feeling all, you know, happy and cheerful, your stomach hurts. Next, you can also go ahead and just palpate your dog's abdomen. Like in here behind Pippi's ribs. You see I've got both hands in between either side. Just loosely palpate in your stomach. I wanna see how she feels. It feels pretty soft. I'm putting moderate pressure. She seems pretty, there's no sign of discomfort. I mean, this is the sign of a dog who doesn't have any real abdominal pain, making it very unlikely you've got any type of serious obstruction. And if you ate my sock, it's probably working its way through. I want you to check your dog's gums. Just lift up your lips, look at her gums. Hers are nice and pink. That's suggested of plenty good blood pressure. That's what I want to see. Next, I want you to assess whether your dog is dehydrated or not. When I touch Pippi's gums, they're quite moist. They're not dry and tacky. If they're very dry and tacky, that's more suggestive of being dehydrated. They're quite moist like Pippi's are. I can just touch my fingers, they don't stick there. She seems to be adequately hydrated. Then I'm gonna look at her eyes. Her eyes pretty filled here. They're right up next to her eyelids. It's a good sign. A dog that's dehydrated, their eyes will be sunken within the globe. The third thing I'll check for dehydration is a thing called her skin tint. I'm gonna grab the surface of her neck. I'm gonna turn it. See how that skin pops right back? A dog that's dehydrated, I'll pinch the skin, it'll stay pinched. She seems to be normally hydrated. Another good sign suggesting that she doesn't have a serious obstruction. Then after I've done all that, I'm gonna offer her a little bit of food. First of all, let's see if she's interested. She seems to be, good sign, making it less likely she's got an obstruction. And when she does eat that food, I'm gonna be monitoring her for the next hour or so. If she keeps that food down for the next few hours, it's very unlikely she's got an obstruction. Your dog has all those clinical signs. Likely you're not dealing with this serious obstruction. It's 
probably gonna move its way through. But there are three things here that you can consider giving they are likely gonna speed this up. Here's what I use most often in veterinary practice. Number one, petroleum jelly or Vaseline. No, it's not a natural product, but it's a darn useful home remedy. And of all the different products out there, it does the best job of coating whatever product your dog has consumed, AKA that sock. It'll bind onto that sock. It won't get absorbed in the intestinal tract and it's gonna help move that sock through. Pretty typical dose, we about a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight twice a day. The next product I'd have you guys consider is this, castor oil. Castor oil, it's an all natural product from the castor bean. Once again, it isn't also absorbed, so it goes into your dog's intestinal tract, it can help coat whatever's there, help move it through. Castor oil also though will cause some intestinal contraction, so it can in some cases speed up moving it through, but may also lead to diarrhea. If I'm gonna use castor oil, I'm gonna be using it at about half the dose of the Vaseline. So something like Pippi, I would be giving her about a teaspoon twice a day of the castor oil. Something like little Tula, about half a teaspoon twice a day. Last option that you can consider that we used in practice, mineral oil. At times I'd use mineral oil for mild constipation in dogs. Once again, it's not absorbed, so it's gonna help coat whatever's in there, help it move it through the intestinal tract. I would dose it similar to the castor oil. For something like Pippi, I'd be giving her about one and a half teaspoons twice a day. A little Tula, about a half a teaspoon twice a day. For most dogs, you're just looking one to two days of treatment and that sock just moves on through. And if you're looking at getting a quality leather collar, leather leash, I encourage you to check out Pop Off Leather. These are wonderfully made products. Look here at the buckle. Now, here's the clip for the leash. Their products, they come with a lifetime guarantee. As it ages, it's gonna get softer. Natural oils from Pippi, they're gonna loosen it up. And because it's leather, you're gonna see far less skin reactions that you might see with like a nylon collar. Plus, doesn't that tan look so good on Pippi? Whoa, so much better than nylon, right Pipster? Good girl. I think this also means it's walk time. Thanks for watching, it's Dr. Jones.